Hi there. Welcome to How to Be Friends with Dave and Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, Dave. You're hiding. How was your nap? Uh, it was okay. It's okay. I was okay. sleepy. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, while you, I don't know, play with your ding dong there or whatever the heck you're doing, I'm going to get right into a little point about this podcast. It turns out that there there are people that pop in and listen to this uh, every now and again just as fans, like actual people. And um, other actual people have been like, hey, what's your podcast about? It really is how to be friends. And I don't know, maybe we don't emphasize that point enough. We took a little break because Mr. Sean has started cleaning out more poop. He's been working hard. Lots of poop. You got to support your friends. Um, more particularly, this is a thing. Okay, we're in our second season, right? Yes. <laughs> and um, we're busy people, and this is not taken off by any means. This is a heck of a lot of fun, okay? Yeah. Anyone watching this podcast, like, we're not doing this to be famous. We're doing this because it's fun. It literally is how to be friends. Yeah. You're in Nevada. Mm -hmm. I'm in Washington. Yes. Now, in that vein, this also allows us to do other hangout things that are hard to do. We talk all the time outside of this, but, like, I can show you things. And we can go over things live like this. And that's what I want to do today. Um, so a little background of this. Uh, society is a little messed up. Everyone's kind of assholes these days. It's kind of making me nuts. Um, my friend Sean, something that we haven't addressed in a little while. My friend Sean, of course, spent some time with Vegas Metro. I was a dispatch. I wasn't uniformed officer. That's fine. Okay. I, of course, have uh, my bachelor's in criminal justice. While neither of us are actively in law enforcement right now, we can talk about it. Yeah. And I want to get your opinion on a bad shoot. Okay? Okay. And the reason why is because this is kind of interesting because a hell of a lot. The reality is that for something really tragic to happen, a hell of a lot has to go wrong. Generally speaking. Okay. All right. So, uh, viewer discretion, in this video, someone does get shot. It's not graphic by any means. But, okay. So, let me just share this real quick. I see, I see a punchline coming. <laughs> and if you heard about this case already, I apologize, but... Um, I, I feel a punchline. It isn't a punchline. I, I really do want to get your, your thoughts on this, so... All righty. So well, yeah, we're not doing the, the whole video. Who, this, you would love yeah. this channel, by the way. Yeah, this Have is you the seen guy this? who got pushed to the ground and then he shot from the ground. Oh, right. I can't hear you either. Hold on a second. What? Let me take this out of. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. You can hear me. I just can't hear you. Okay, let's bring this back out. And hopefully I'll be able to hear you again after this comes out. So you just watch this, Sean. And I'm going to kind of point stuff out for you and the audience as you go on. Uh, this fella here is going to head on over here. And I'll kind of talk it through. As footage well captured on, the entire incident. I don't want to give it all away. Okay. So there is a person in this vehicle here. He obviously starts talking. This is a handicap spot, which we'll get back into. And it doesn't get super heated, but obviously there's an exchange. The exchange is noted, and this man is the person's husband. She's getting out of the car, shoves him down, he immediately gets up, produces a gun, and he's shot. Okay. Runs in. Following the shooting, Draco. Oh. Do you need me to run that video again? No. Now, let's see if I can hear you again. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. So, I broke this down already with a couple of friends. 
I want Sean's opinion. Um, yeah, so I've seen this before. This is, it wasn't a good shooting at all. Right. It's a bad shoot. Right. In order for anything to be considered self-defense, for the most part, you're not the one who can escalate the threat. Mm -hmm. So you have to meet force with force, and he did not meet force with force. He's the one who escalated. That's a great perspective. Um, okay, so I want to I want to break this down. All right, right. So the first point is, do you know how the argument started? Uh, no. Okay, that's fine. So this fella, Michael. Drecker, Jerker, Jerky, or whatever his name is, apparently goes to this convenience store every day. Sean, um, give me a good reason to go to the same convenience store every day, because I'm not sure about that. The, to go to the same convenience store every day? Every damn day. I go to the same convenience store because they usually have the product that I want, like a certain type of bottle of water or something. The same yeah. one every day? Yeah, because it's more convenient. If I have a commute, I just stop at the same convenience store every day on the way to work and grab a bottle of water. I know they have the water. That's fair. I appreciate because that. I'll go to other convenience stores and they don't sell gallons of water. It boggles my mind. We live in a desert and I can't buy a gallon of water at some Chevrons. I don't understand. That helps me understand because it's hard for me to understand going to the same convenience store every day. So this fella considers himself apparently the guardian of this convenience store. Oh, and this yeah. is what started the exchange was a social faux pas happened, right? The car okay. that you saw was, yeah, the car that you saw was parked in a handicapped spot. Not really parked, obviously. There was a driver in the seat. She had let her husband go in to get something and was going to be gone. Okay. Social faux pas, but not a big deal. Right? Okay. All right. This guy, Michael Jerker, whatever, took a front to this. That's why he was walking around the vehicle looking for handicap placards. Okay. And then he approached the, hey, where's your handicap placards? Okay. I considered going to the same convenience store every day the first problem. But you've explained that away. The second problem here is, everyone, keep your damn noses out of each other's business. Yeah. Yeah, if, your own business. <sighs> If a handicapped person came to use that, the only handicapped spot, and the person then refused to get out of the way, okay, then someone is being wrong, but if you just don't like it, screw off. Right. All right. Yeah. It's probably no, it was, it was a bad shooting. That's, that's, that's obvious. In order to justify a shooting, the person has to pose a threat. Uh-huh. They have to have the capability of offering a threat. Uh -huh. In most cases, there has to be some type of weapon. Uh -huh. So, and when I say that, um, somebody's yelling at you and saying they're going to kill you, but they're all the way across the street. Do you have a right to shoot them? No. Somebody's yelling at you that they're going to kill you. They're across the street and they're holding a baseball bat. Does that give you the right to shoot them? No. Somebody's yelling you, threatening that they're going to kill you. They have a baseball bat and they're four feet away from you. Now we've met the specific criteria that we need to justify a self-defense shooting. And in this case, he was pushed to the ground like he was a child. So, Okay. All right, Sean, you're, you're, you're hitting right on it. No pun intended. Let's put yourself in the shoes of the feller getting shot. Let's say the exact same thing happens where your dear missus drops you off while you go and get something. You come out 
and some guy is berating her. Not necessarily yelling, but berating. What is your first response? Why are my wife and this guy arguing? <laughs> right. So you like, don't jump right to, hey, let me shove this guy over, right? No. Like, here, in, in a world where a bunch of people carry guns that shouldn't have guns, my first instinct wouldn't be to just start a fight. But that still doesn't justify him getting shot. I mean, that was stupid on his part, but... Right. Because yeah. did he die? I can't remember. He okay, yes. Um, he did die. Uh, apparently, he got hit like right in the chest and or excuse me, the lung and the heart with a 40 cal. So he was going down. Um, but uh, I, I like this example to discuss overall because, yeah, we'll parse down the shooting a little bit more, but we've already talked about how. You, Everyone in general needs to stay out of each other's business, right? Right. If people have gotten into each other's business, there is an appropriate level of escalation for everyone involved. If someone is, hell, if someone is outright yelling at your wife, you don't actually have reason to shove that person to the ground. You've just committed assault if you do. Right. 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 Okay. So he gets shoved to the ground and Michael Jerker, or whatever his name is, pulls his pistol, right? Yeah. Give, give me a second here. Let me see if I can. I'm no, sorry. Okay. Take you can, you continue. You're good. You're um, continue, sir. He pulls his gun out and the video breakdown in, in that podcast gives about 2.5 seconds between gun being pulled and the trigger being fired. It is a little hard, excuse me, the trigger being pulled. It is a little hard to see in the video, okay? Now, uh, I don't know how engaged you are, Sean. Are you able to answer the question what the aggressor did in that 2.5 seconds before the bullet fired? Uh, he probably said something to the effect of, what are you going to do, shoot me? <laughs> 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 because, because, uh, okay, there isn't, there isn't any information to say whether or not that specifically happened, but that 2.5 seconds, you can see in the video and I'll put the, the link in the, the, oh, this is great. I'll put the link in the, the argument or in the, uh, the show notes, but that 2.5 seconds was enough time for the guy to take two steps back and start to raise his hands. Right, which was, you know, good on his part. He didn't, apparently did not antagonize the situation. He was like, whoa, right. hey, man, I'm sorry. I just made a really dumb mistake. I apologize. Um, so we'll talk about this little pyramid. Anyone watching the show can can read ahead. I haven't seen this yet while we we're reading it, but... Um, so to be fair, all right, these statistics are out there. I'm not going to pull it up right now. Um, the, the FBI has stated that there's up to, there's a minimum of 500,000 up to 2 million defensive gun uses, uh, every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, guns save lives. If he had pulled his gun, which isn't entirely appropriate in this situation, but if he had pulled his gun and the guy stepped away and he put his gun away or hell even still had it out while he went to his car and just left. Okay. In my world, that's offsetting fouls. Okay. Dude runs up and assaults him. Dude pulls a gun. No shot is fired. Everyone goes home. Fair enough. And that's why and you can explain the, the look in just a moment, but that's why there is such a nebulous number of defensive gun uses every year, because it's hard to prove exactly how many times something exactly like that scenario I just laid out happens. That's something happens. Someone pulls a gun, it diffuses the situation and everyone goes home. Roger. I'm copying. Yes. I copy what you're right. saying. 
And I'm not, I, if I'm reading your look right, I'm not endorsing pulling a gun because you got pushed. I'm just saying offsetting fouls. Okay. So we'll, we'll go back to uh, what the final result of that was. Tell me about this, Sean. Um, so Metro used something like this. It was a circle, though. This is what they, they will call a force continuum. This mm -hmm. is on a concealed carry website. But basically, it's the type of force that you're supposed to meet force with in situations. So if mm -hmm. you look at it, we can jump to right above purple. It says the subject assaults you with some type of physical contact. And the result, because you are, you are only supposed to ever step up once in a force continuum. So mm -hmm. you're supposed to protect yourself or property by hitting, kicking, or striking. Okay. Great. And then above that, the physical contact with the subject is not effective. Use self-defense tools other than a firearm, sprays, or electrical devices or possible alternatives. So the idea is you're supposed to... You're supposed to do anything you possibly can to avoid using a firearm. Like, it's... A, That's I, correct. It's a difficult concept for some people, but you're supposed to do everything you can not to shoot somebody, not fall to the ground like a big pile of wuss and then pull your gun because your daddy didn't hug you enough when you were little. Correct. Okay. And this is cool because this is kind of a reverse Joe Pesci. A lot of people are hard on the police but really the police are about a step behind in terms of escalation, really, if they're doing it right. If they're doing it right, correct. I, I can't remember exactly what movie it was. I think it might've been Goodfellas or something, but Joe Pesci being like, you come at me, I'm gonna come at you with a knife. You come at me with a knife, I'm gonna come at you with a gun. You come at with me with a gun, you better finish me because I'm gonna keep coming back at you. The gangster idea was, you're the opposite. You're one step ahead in the escalation. Right. Police are one step behind in the escalation. They're supposed to be. And then when there's a shooting like that, a lot of people will Monday morning quarterback it. But the difference between law enforcement and people like you and me is when it comes to the law, we're only supposed to protect ourselves and people that, you know, our family members or people we know and care about. Right. Right. Whereas when you're in law enforcement, you constantly have to be thinking of the threat that that person poses to everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, people will often say, I can't believe they shot him or they shot him in the back while he was running away. And yeah, it's in a lot of times those aren't good shootings. But when the responsibility is for safety of the public as a whole, mm -hmm. sometimes it can appear that they have escalated something that they shouldn't have. But in reality, you don't know on that video that they have, you know, 12 prior assault charges and assault and, right. you know, assault on a police officer. And this person's just committed a crime and they're running away, but they have a gun. And history shows us if they come across a civilian, there's a chance that person might get hurt. So you have to make like this crack moment decision. Mm -hmm. Whereas people like you and me, we're not supposed to, it's not our job. No. Yeah. You know, I shot him because he was a threat to society. Congratulations. You're a murderer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So um, that that little clip comes from JCS Criminology. They're, they're, they're a great video, but it's a 50 minute long video. Yeah. We're not going to go through the whole thing. But to fast forward, um, it, it's a lot of police interviews. And the police sat down and interviewed the guy. And he was very polite. And he was very. Um, respectful and cooperative and all of that stuff. But he never once said the one key thing that a person needs to say if right. they use their firearm in self-defense, which is, of course... I was, I was in fear of my life. Right. He never said that. Right. There was never any threats, etc. cetera. He, he just felt like he was eliminating a threat. So did he get like... A manslaughter charge or second degree murder I'm 20 years for manslaughter manslaughter all right yep right because it wouldn't be first degree because it wasn't premeditated right so i could see how they might have tried to go for second degree and that would have been fair right but after reviewing it and talking to the guy they probably just went with manslaughter 
Right. Because probably, and actually, again, this is why this is a really good, really interesting case to talk about. Because one of the reasons we have such problems today is because so many court cases are so high profile. And because they're high profile and socially charged, people will overcharge. They'll go for the highest thing that they possibly can. When in reality, if you charge with the most appropriate charge to the crime, you're more likely to get a solid conviction, such as this. That's a weird game of chess, though, right? I mean, in the district attorney's office or when we start talking about that, that is a weird game of chess because you're absolutely right. If you go for a higher conviction, there's less mm -hmm. chance of a conviction. But often they push for the higher conviction because they're trying to push for somebody to bargain down. It's like yes. this weird case of chess that gets played in, in court. It's so odd to me. Like if we push yes. for first degree murder, he's more likely to bargain down to blank and make a plea right. deal. And it's so weird to me. It like is it, it's, because it, it's a game. It's a game of justice chicken. Right. It's a great way to put it. Um, and it's valid because one would almost think this, the sentencing is the more important point for getting the justice, really. Right. You get the appropriate conviction and then, because manslaughter can carry a variety of different years, uh, it, it, so anyway, there's a purpose for my bringing this up. Okay, mm -hmm. besides the fact that it it it's great in showing how you should appropriately handle your firearms, it's great for talking about situations. But we got funny little things developing in our our wild coronavirus world. We got police shortages, we got EMS shortages, we've got um, nursing shortages. Uh, Can you imagine? So, I'm yes. just, I just want to say, can you imagine? You join the National Guard. Go on. <laughs> to serve your country. And you end up being like a ground pounder, right? Mm -hmm. what, what is it, 11 Bang Bang? Yeah, but is presumably it, still is, is that. Yeah. Is, that, is that us? Yeah. So you, you're an 11 Bang Bang, right? You want to be a door kicker, and you're just waiting for the next opportunity for the National Guard to be deployed. And then they activate your ass to drive a school bus. <laughs> oh. Uh, Did you, you saw that, right? I didn't see that. No, this there was a thing? shortage of school bus drivers, and they activated the National Guard in that state to drive school buses. Can you imagine... Massachusetts oh. National Guard to help school districts with bus driving. Just so our few but loyal fans Yeah, just so know you know that, I'm not making this up. Right. Here we have it. To help school districts impacted by school bus driver shortages. That come up there, Sean? You seeing that? Mm-hmm. Oh. 100 members of the National Guard will be school bus drivers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know how this works. If you're in the National Guard, much like the reserves, you have a normal full-time job. Uh huh. Maybe it's a crappy job, or maybe it's a really good job. But no, if the National Guard says we're going to activate you, you got to go. You got to go. So if you were making... $25 an hour as a pipe fitter or something and you have a wife and family to support and your unit tells you you've been activated and now you're going to make E4 pay mm -hmm. to drive a school bus that is a great reason to completely lose your shit because that is not what you signed up for at no point did I ever see in any of the paperwork for reservist? Well, yeah, but I mean, if we need somebody to drive a school bus, well, we'll activate you for that too. <laughs> it's so bad. It's and, and I, that's why, kids, you don't join the National Guard because the National Guard could be activated by your state. You join the reserves. Right. Um, I think that 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 trend probably started 
Um, and we talked about this last season a little bit. Uh, when Desert Storm, excuse me, not Desert Storm, the Global War on Terror, we activated a lot of National Guardsmen to go into Afghanistan and Iraq and fight, right? Operation, which is not Operation Enduring Freedom. Right. Uh, which is very mercenary. Uh, because we talked about this before, just very briefly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way we, that we don't we, have enough people to kill people, we need to activate and pay more money to kill people. Yes. Yeah. Because it's not, we're not sending our regular military who are regularly salaried to do this. No. The federal government will go to a state and say, we want your assets, we will pay you this. And some states want that money and will be like, hey, we'll send our guys for X amount instead. It is literally a mercenary relationship. So we had that going on, and now it's like, ah, we can go send them. We can deploy them against traffic. Yeah. <laughs> after, 20, after 20 years of war, they're like, well, we got a shortage of people. And we got to activate the National Guard constantly. Right. That's because after a four year stint, Triple Canopy is going to pay you $90,000 a year to do the same job. And you're not going to re up and you're going to get a job with Triple Canopy. And Triple Canopy is going to pick up the government contract because the US is paying mercenaries to fight a war. And you're going to go work for Triple Canopy. So after, I don't know. 12 years of war, people started getting smart about it. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Now, oh, and this is this is valid as well. This on the point. Uh, because things are I bring up the instance of a bad shooting because it is actually becoming more and more likely that people will have to engage threats. Uh I have a friend who follows local emergency. It's like a Facebook page. Okay. Um, there are a bunch of reports of 911 calls in our local area here getting busy signals, getting disconnect signals, or being put on hold for 10 minutes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. So you've heard of this. Yeah. Um, this is not exclusive to our area. Let, let me just. No. Let me see if I, I'm actually going to pull up the show notes for once to see if I can get this. So I was curious about this uh -huh. and I actually, um, I did my little, my little Google searches about it and, um, yeah. So this is just kind of the immediate results of my Google search because there's, there's nothing nationally to say that there's a shortage of EMS or calls, but we have the register star, which is in one state. So saying call volumes a problem. We have Austin, Texas, another one with problems, but EMS shortages in Sumner County, Tennessee, uh, Albuquerque, thin blue line stretch thinner. There isn't a whole lot of talk about the national case but lots and lots of states are reporting this problem. Yes. Okay. It was, it was a problem. Go. It was a problem back when I worked there. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, again, putting the points together, this is following up with what I was talking about before, that we don't need fact checkers. You can do your own homework. Mm -hmm. um, so I went back to try to find uh, average response times. Now, um, it's not going to let me share. That's fine. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, I pulled up an article from, uh, it was from 2020, but the stats were from 2008. And so, for example, 30% uh, of violent crimes took six to 10 minutes to respond to, right? Mm hmm. Same with about the same number, a third aggravated assault, uh, about six to 10 minutes, right? But another full third of each of those took longer than 11 minutes. Right. So 
basically what we're saying is you've got a 66% chance of a violent crime taking longer than five minutes to get a police response. And I want to be clear, getting there in five minutes is actually a really good response. Yeah, that's a great response. Right, right. But this is from 2008. Yeah. So what are we at now? Um, oh, yeah, I know. Rhetorically That's, speaking. Yeah. So, yeah, right. And anyone who's ever been in a real fight, six minutes is, is an eternity. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I bring this up. If you, you need to be prepared for emergencies. And I bring that example up because when an emergency or conflict happens, you need to remain calm. You can't be shoving people. And you need to make clear decisions. If you make a mistake, don't follow it up with another mistake. If you pull a firearm when you're not supposed to, that doesn't mean use it. Yeah. So, if things get worse, y'all just keep your heads together. It's all right. So, here, let me put it in perspective. So, this is as of 2015. Okay. okay. Fresh stuff. And this is Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm -hmm. The population of Las Vegas as of 2019. Mm-hmm was 634,000 people. Uh, okay. between, between Henderson and Northtown, we're usually over a million. The sure. entire population of Nevada is about 3 million people. Right. Okay. In 2015, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department's Communications Bureau took 3.3 million phone calls. Hot damn. Yes. Everyone called 911 at some point, basically. Pretty much. So the way that it's going to work when you call 911, depending on where you are, is you're going to get two different types of call centers. Either you're going to get a dedicated communication center or you're going to get a joint communication center. And I think you guys have a joint one where you are. It would where surprise me. It is actually a privatized company that is contracted by the agencies so they mm -hmm. have a big communications department and all the local fire in multnomah or clark county or whatever they say we're going to use you so whenever you call 911 you get this same building and they handle police fire and medical for us it was just us as the police department that's that's it that's the police department. So when you talk Good. about 3.3 million calls, it's just the police department. If you need fire or medical, mm -hmm. we would transfer you Valid. to the different department. There are queues that you will sit in for emergency and non-emergency calls. Mm -hmm. This is what I would tell people who complain about the length of time it takes to get a 911 operator and that is learn when to and to not call 911 because a majority of the 911 calls we got were not emergency calls mm -hmm. you're calling 911 cuz that's the number you know and you sit on hold cuz everybody else does and then i tell you i'm transferring you to the non emergency line because this isn't an emergency right so when we talk about law enforcement response based off of a shortage of cops, that's different. But when we're talking about 911 call hold times, mm -hmm. I can guarantee you a lot of those are because you have a lot of people calling 911 who shouldn't be. It chews up the queue because they're prioritized. Yes. 911 calls go through first. If you call non-emergency and there are 911 calls holding, you won't get through on non-emergency because we're busy handling the important shit. 
Okay. They, there's a call priority system. Uh -huh. So if I have 12 calls that have come through on 911, now we got to muck through those to find the actual emergency. It's uh -huh. going to kill time. So a lot of that is because of that. The other reason is because it's an extremely stressful job. Yes. It, it has a extremely high burnout rate. It's a difficult job to do. I mm -hmm. did it for five years. It broke me. Mm -hmm. um, and so the turnover rate's extremely high. It is hard to find people who will do that job. Mm -hmm. Which is happening a lot in general across the yes. board. So. Uh -huh. Uh, life ain't easy, kids. Uh, be grateful for those of the, those out there who are helping you. Just because it's their job doesn't mean that they don't deserve some thanks. And in conjunction with that, there's another social good. In most places, 311 is non-emergency. If you need to get hold of the police, but your house isn't on fire... In most places, three one one. Yeah, usually. Yeah, it's not it's hard. Totally fine. Unless, all right. Unless there's an immediate threat to life, person, or property. I think it was life, limb, or property. Don't call nine one one. All right, Sean. I'm gonna give. This is your teaser to to get in here, but you owe us something. Three picks for Rick. Are you prepared? What? Ow! Oh. Three picks for Rick? Rick and Morty. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I so, forgot. Take a quick moment to think okay. about it. Yeah. I do want to I do want to make a point here real quick. Okay. Okay. Uh, while you think about it, you yeah. probably saw that um, our esteemable Representative Alexandria Ocasio or Cortez Esquire got in trouble for wearing a tax the rich dress to the Met Gala, which was a thirty thousand dollar ticket yeah. event. Tax, right? Tax the rich, yeah. Okay. This yeah. point has been well beleaguered. She's stupid. This this I it maybe yeah. someone should say I, I, I shouldn't be that mean, but she's stupid. It was it was Deeply contradictory. And it got me thinking a little bit about it. Okay, tax the rich. Cool, right? Sean, how did Tesla become successful? Not, not by taxing the rich. <laughs> In fact, the opposite. Every single car company out there making electric cars only does so because tax breaks. Yeah, you get a wicked tax break for being an electric car manufacturer. Correct. When we were talking about, you know, GM and Ford having electric cars that catch fire and how it's like, why is this just okay? Because all they have to do is make an electric car and they're immediately, they don't have to sell those electric cars and they're making money because of the tax breaks. Tesla was not profitable for how well? How many years? Forever. Right. They were only able to get up on their feet and spend all of the money that they did to become profitable because of tax breaks. Uh, Nicholas Cage, I think, would be great. Oh. Yeah. Did I just? Yeah. Kaboosh. Come on. Nicholas Cage would be a perfect Rick. He has already played scientific. He's, by he's being, played drunk and you know leaving Las Vegas. He was in, He was the the voice of uh, the prof, the professor in Astro Boy. Yeah, good choice. Yeah, I, I would definitely say Nicolas Cage would be great for a live action Rick and Morty. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Take another thing while I finish my point here to our socialist friends out there. Okay. All right. If you want to save the planet and you like electric cars, you cannot at the same time enjoy the idea of taxing the rich. 
if you want money from rich people, you're going to have to tax all the rich people, not just the ones that you don't like. And I'm not even endorsing that. It's stupid to throw taxes at everyone in hopes. How it rich are problems. we talking about? Because as a person who just got a job that's probably going to pay me a lot of money, what's our cap that we're looking at? Because my opinion might change. Uh, according to our zombie shuffling brain broken president, who now pretty much everyone dislikes. Yeah. Everyone above four hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. All right. You're fine. You're now, Sean. Yeah. yeah. You can't put enough hours in the week. No. Yet. <laughs> not, not yet. Not, not yet. yet, baby. Not yet. Maybe no, when you get I'll, your Tesla robot. I'll never get there. No. But when no. we start talking between like the 75 to 100 range, that's where I got to start looking at what hours I'm putting in. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because, of course, one of the things we can talk about, if anyone ever wants to ask about it, uh, I also cover a lot of stuff with finances, but the basic rule of thumb is that once you start getting money, <laughs> the real secret is not continuing to earn money, but keeping it out of Uncle Sam's hands. Right, because you got to start now playing this game of, I. but if I earn extra money, I pay this more in taxes and an offsets are earning the extra money. So I'm better. I literally make more money making less money. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'll see both sides of the arguments too. I really will. Because I've also been in the banking world where someone has come in and gotten a massive auto loan to buy a massive vehicle for their business for no other reason that Didn't they actually massive. make the money back in taxes. Right. Because of the sheer amount of tax write-offs there are. So if, if you want to talk about being more efficient, how we collect taxes, yeah, maybe we should probably be more specific about what counts as a business write-off. I, yeah, I guess. So like in this job, um, if I were to buy a welder to weld two specific tools I handmade for the entire year, mm -hmm. I can technically count that as an expense mm -hmm. because I used it in my job. Mm -hmm. Even though they have a welder at their shop, I could still count it off, right? Because nobody's doing the deep dive. Right. But the gloves that I have to use that, you know, we go through leather gr gloves like crazy because mm -hmm. they're covered in fecal matter. You don't really get to use them repeatedly. Uh, yeah. You know, it's nice to be able to write that kind of stuff off. But, yeah, you can you can get crazy with write offs. Mm -hmm. You can get crazy with it. Sometimes it's justified. A lot Jason. of times it's just gaming the system. Jason Sudeikis and Bill Hader. All right. Out of those three that you stated? Uh, it's still... Okay, go ahead. Bill Hader would probably... Bill Hader. Yeah. Yes. Hands down, Bill Hader. Yeah. You've heard it right here on the How to Be Friends with Dave and Sean show. Oh, I, I would love to see Bill Hader as Rick. That would yeah. be hilarious. Bill Hader. Would be you've watched. You've watched Barry, correct? I've watched parts of Barry. Yeah. But the the dude can flip an act. Yeah. He can really it's act. Fantastic. Yeah. He's Bill got Hader. a massive range in comedy as well as his acting, yeah. and he looks goofy as hell. Yeah. Age yeah. him a little bit for the character, and it'll be beautiful. And in, in fact. Every good actor out there to continue their career needs a good role that helps them transition to people accepting them as an older person. That would be perfect for him. Yeah, I think so. Too good. Yep. Yep. Bill okay. Hader. I'm going to tie a couple of things here together, Sean, because okay. you and I talked very recently about how people need to get their heads together about science, right? Yes. And prior to that, we talked about how you don't need fact checkers, right? Yes. Now I'm going to harken back a little bit further 
A point that I brought up last season, very early on in very early episodes, was how much it frustrates me that to this very day, religions continue to try to find a way to spoon feed you religion. Okay? You don't have this problem so much because you have a de decentralized faith. You, you were born into this having to figure it out your way. But we had this thing. And, and I don't mean exclusively to poop on Christianity. It's just, it's familiar to a lot of people. And so it's, it's very easy with this one. So this, this is what I talked about last season, and I'll bring it back together. But Christ came. Yeah. Church was established. Yeah. Things started going nuts. You know, people got nailed to wood. Um, it wasn't great. And things went wild after that. All right. Oh, yeah. Nuts. Yeah. People put together a bunch of writings, made the Bible. Uh -huh. Specifically, King James was like, hey, okay, it hasn't been good. I need to put all this together in such a way that people can read it. Right. They like, can have it themselves. King James was like, this is my Chinese democracy. Like, I'm going to this. I'm going to drop this album. It's going to be hot, yo. Right. And it was very well intentioned and wonderful and beautiful, except for the fact that people couldn't read. Yeah. So they were dependent upon the Padre still to spoon feed them their religion. Okay. Right. So we fast forward to the 19th century where things started to kick up, right? People started to become literate. And there was like a big deal in religion as a result of that. It was a big deal because people could read the Bible themselves. What's this it? is where there was a, a, a lot of stuff happening religiously, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Because when was the Guggenheim printing press invented? You pull that up. Oh, the Gu go Guggenheim. Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Okay. Uh, 1436. Yeah, so you're right about, yeah, but yeah, I'm tracking. You're, I would say late 18th, early 19th century, but yes. Perfect. Perfect. Because by the time the 20th century came around, mm -hmm. the old King James Version started to become faux pas in that the language was getting old, right? Yeah. So we started coming up with new versions. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. After the Padres stopped, they, they found a way to make money off of it. Right? Okay. Well, there's the, there's the NIV, right? Right. The new international version. And then you have the KJV, King's James version, which was the version right. that I, I studied KJV. And rightly so. I think that's the best one to go off of, but but I, I was digress. a Southern Baptist, so right. I think that's the the standard issue Bible for the Southern Baptist is the KJV. Right now, things have gone completely full circle now mm -hmm. because we've dumbed down the Bible enough, mm -hmm. and enough people can read it that in order to ensure that that you can spoon feed. Now, a bunch of the, the pastors and so forth will go and get their degrees in ancient languages, go back and read the original texts, and give you what they were originally saying. Sure. All right. Yeah. Which is interesting I because you... I don't think they're giving you what they're originally saying, but... You're picking yeah. up on the point. Yeah, it's it's you're it's, picking up on the point. It's just a reinterpretation of an interpretation. Like right. Well, what just, they meant when they said this was right. Okay. Like, For those of you out there who missed Sean's apt previous comments about how the scientific method is supposed to be an effort to destroy your own stuff. Scientific method 
also should completely reject being spoon fed. If yes. someone tells you to believe something because quote, that's the science, I'm not even gonna tell them, say that they're wrong. I'm going to say that they probably didn't do the research and that doesn't stop you from doing it. Right, it doesn't, you know, back in the day when everybody's like, well, obviously the earth is the center of the universe. And there was one guy who was like, hey, wait a minute, I don't think that's true. And everybody went, no, that's what science says. And he was I... like, eh, I don't think so. And then the church locked him up. You really need those dissenting opinions. You do. Even That's if... the only way you can move forward as a society. Unfortunately, yes. when it starts taking the majority out of their comfort zone, it's hard for people to actually accept it. It is. And of course, I'm not speaking to anything specifically here. Um, interestingly, I've had a lot of um, surprising discussions with people who still don't have the literature on a lot of the, the stuff that we've been talking about. I'm actually really glad about the podcast where we've done gotten some actual stuff out there for people. David's trying to do avoid just fine. David's trying to avoid using the word COVID because I lost my shit last week with COVID. <laughs> and and I totally respect him for trying not to bring it up to not to piss me off. <laughs> and and but, I'm so done with COVID. <laughs> it's not just... And everyone anything. should be. I can't fucking stand talking about this shit anymore. All anybody talks about is the stupid fucking COVID shit. Why their opinion's right. Why somebody else's opinion wrong. Why the science has changed. I don't fucking care. You people need to go out and get a goddamn life. If your entire existence is revolving around fucking COVID, buy a puzzle. Seriously. Let it go. Just live don't your disagree. damn life. Uh, Just live yes. your life. Yes. Get the information. Make your decisions. Live your life. Yes. And that was the whole point with the original shooting scenario. You, know what you, you don't do. have to get into other people's business about it either. You know what you should do? What's that? You have a you have an old army jacket? Build a Lego. Oh. Get into Lego. Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, it's the Razor The Razor Crest. That was the name of that stupid thing. I couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah, there's, oh. a, there's a baby Yoda in there. All right. Sean. Do Lego. Yes. Sean. Yes. I need yep. to have, I need to have Papa John's baby. <laughs> God, are you, are you telling me you got to poop? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I abused myself yesterday. I um, ate a whole damn anchovy pizza from. I haven't had Papa, Papa John's, John's in so long, and the thought of it makes me ill. Oh, it's so gross. Okay, just real quick, because we do need to wrap this up. What I will say is Papa John's. Among the pizza makers, does have a nice clean crust um, <laughs> compared to the other pizza makers. <laughs> and this is only relevant because I tried their stuffed crust. If you have a, a relatively nice clean crust and you fill it with fatty mozzarella, it does not jive well. And no. I'm feeling that right now. No. No, yeah. and I, I am telling you, my opinion on eating food has changed ever since I've had to clean out the pipes that catch everything left over from cleaning your food or cooking it. Holy crap. People, fiber's real. Yeah, no, not even, I'm talking about the grease traps at restaurants, dude. Like the amount of grease left over from the production of these foods. Ugh. Yeah. Eat clean food. Yeah, don't. If it if that's what it's, it's doing to the pipes, I can't imagine what's what it's doing to your colon. For real, for real. 
But <laughs> well, oh, actually, you and I will talk offline about it. But for right now, Sean, I'm headed out on orders tomorrow. Yes. Uh, gonna be doing my army thing. Yes. Thank you for coming out. And when will we company. be back? Are you back next weekend? So I I I will not be back, but to, next weekend. But depending on how the schedule goes, we may still be able to record. We might get another uh, podcast from on scene in uniform kind of stuff. So all right, we'll see how it turns out. All right, love you, homie. Love you, buddy. Bye. Bye.